three Buckeyes that might opt out of the Rose Bowl. And with it being the gift giving season, Santa Claus has brought three gifts to the Ohio State football team. What are they? Stick around to find out in this Christmas Eve episode of Locked on Buckeyes. <laughs> You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes. Part of Locked On podcast network i'm your host jay stevens also the host of the jay stevens podcast it is friday december 24th in the year 2021 and i want to thank every person out there for making locked on buckeyes their first listen of every single day it is christmas eve you might be out and about doing some last minute shopping traveling to grandma's house or anything in between that have fun be safe Play this throughout the day and enjoy some Buckeye talk as you're finalizing your Christmas plans. Opt-out season is here. It's unfortunate that we are at the part of the week where we are about a week away, about a week and a half away, until the Buckeyes take the field once again and things have not solidly been announced, publicly been announced, if certain players are playing or not playing, opting out or opting out. I get why Ryan Day may be directing certain players to not announce their decision for the Rose Bowl gamesmanship, not not wanting to tip his hand. But when I got off work on Thursday, yes, it was on Thursday, got on YouTube and was listening to some Ohio State beat writers talk, And they said not one, not two, but there are possibly three players that might opt out for the bowl game. My ears perked up because I wanted to hear exactly who they are. One, Garrett Wilson. Two, Haskell Garrett. Three, Nicholas petit Frere. That is not set in stone. It is not concrete that they are going to opt out of the bowl game. But these are things that Steve Hellwagon from 24-7 Sports, Bucknuts.com, and Tony Gerdeman from Buckeye Scoop. Um, those are things that they both confirmed and said that they're hearing. Not that it's solidified that it's been announced. They're hearing it's possible that Garrett Wilson, Haskell Garrett, and Nicholas petit Frere will opt out of the Rose Bowl. This is something new. Also, it's something that's also expected now from certain players. They also mentioned something Steve Hellwagon did, I believe. No, actually, it was Tony Gorderman. He mentioned something that happened that Corey Thompson actually talked about just recently here on the podcast. Denzel Ward, the I believe it was a Cotton Bowl against USC, they thought he was going to play in the game. They didn't find out until very, very late that he was not going to play in the game. At least in this point right now, based off of things that those two gentlemen are hearing, that it's very possible that internally they know who's going to play. They know who's going to not play. But publicly, we don't know. That's one thing about college that if if you are a fan of a team and you want to know more about the in-depth things that happen, depth chart-wise, um, injury-wise, you're not really going to get those because college football does not demand, one, a depth chart to be released, and two, for the injury report to be released at a certain period of time. All they say is, hey, let us know who's available. Is it going to be this pl- this many players, all these players we saw in the Michigan game? Buckeyes had a season-high amount of n- players that were unavailable for that game. Didn't matter if they were playing, playing on the field or not. They still would have gotten beat against Michigan because the way that Ohio State had played all year, it really just got put on front street, and Michigan took advantage of that at that point in time. But this is interesting because you think about it. If Garrett Wilson does not play, if Haskell Garrett does not play, if Nicholas petit Freyer does not play, is it a big hole? We have seen how the Buckeyes offense has gone without Garrett Wilson on the field. It's a whole lot different. It's not as smooth sailing as it has been at times with Haskell Garrett not on the field. You're, you're losing, I believe, Haskell Garrett, five and a half sacks on the season, 
team lead, which is not good at all. And then you also have him leading the team in tackles for loss. So you're losing a big piece of your leadership on defense, a big piece of the production on defense. The one thing about this team is they've been rotating guys in all year long. The D-line rotation is probably going to be normal. Haskell Garrett not being in there. He has not played every game this year. So, that's yes, that's a big hole to, to fill. But I'm sure Larry Johnson may have been expecting the possibility of what has been what is possible now, what's being speculated from happening. Then also a Nicholas Petit Freyer starting left tackle. The weird thing about this is you, you're – Backup left tackle is your starting left guard. You move over Thera Mumford to left tackle. You move in Matt Jones to left guard. The other three spots on the offensive line are not altered. So as weird as it is to say Garrett Wilson, not there, that's a big loss. Then without him at one point, that's probably going to be the biggest loss if he does not play. Haskell Garrett, big loss as well. But there are other guys that are on the defensive line that don't play as much as I believe they should. So if he's not there, that gives them more opportunity to play in moments when I think they should play. Nicholas, Nicholas Petit Freyer, big, big loss. But I think he's one of the few people on Ohio State's team that doesn't need to play to raise up his draft stock, which remind scouts, NFL executives, the type of player that he is. He has enough film, enough tape out there at that left tackle position or even the right tackle position position. For them to know the type of player that he is. Honestly, if this is true, if all three of them do not play, they're much for moving to left tackle, his spot in the NFL. This is perfect. I mean, you go 12 games and you're starting at left guard, a little sprinkle here or there at left tackle, but you've been a left guard all season long. All of a sudden, you go back to left tackle. Last game of the season, the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. All eyes are on you on New Year's Day. This is a perfect time prior to the Senior Bowl or any other postseason bowls that he may go into to prepare himself for the NFL draft. Hey, this right here is a great time for you to do that very thing. Hey, I hope they play. I understand if they do not play, the money they're about to take on is massive. It's just new. I was thinking about this recently. 20 years ago, opting out when players could get – Massive amount of, amount of some money going into the NFL draft. Opt-outs then were not a thing. Opting out now, it's expected. Times have changed. Just got to roll with the punches. You are tapped into Locked on Buckeyes here on Christmas Eve, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team, every single day. I, I hope you're having fun. I hope you're being safe. I hope nobody is getting into any accidents or arguments or disputes on Christmas Eve, about any, well, not any at all, but especially at this time of year, not at all. This is not a time you want to be fighting, complaining, pickering about anything. Keep a smile on your face. I know it's hard. It's different to see so much football on your TV of the college football variety without the Buckeyes playing. But might I remind you, New Year's Day, 5 p.m. Eastern, they'll be back on your television in Pasadena California. A little fun little thought that was brought to me, introduced to me via the host of Locked on Volunteers, Locked on Vols, in regards to one gift. This was a question. One gift that Santa Claus could bring your team. And I said, why not just make it three? One for the offense, one for the defense, and one for the special teams. We're going to have a little fun with this here. Honestly, before I even put this together, I already had this thought about this player on the offensive side of the ball. I could double up on offense if you want me to. I'll throw the, the second in on offense, the one on defense I think you'll all like, and then the one on the special teams. It's a little something that has been close all year long, but it hasn't happened. We'll do it. We'll have a little fun together. One gift from Santa Claus. One gift Santa Claus could give one player or position on the Ohio State offense goes right to Chris Alave, the senior going to the NFL, broke David Boston's career receiving touchdowns record, and he, at this point in time, is currently sitting at 936 receiving yards. 
The other two wide receivers that are in this trio that Ohio State has, Garrett Wilson, who only played 11 games, has 1,058 receiving yards. Jackson Smith and Jigba, who played in all 12 games this year, has 1,259 receiving yards. Chris Alave is, and I'm trying to do quick math, was it 60? Yes, 64 yards away from eclipsing that 1,000-yard receiving mark. Think about it. The same year you break the all-time receiving touchdown record at Ohio State, held by David Boston, been that record for 20-plus years, you at the same time, you join this group of receivers, three receivers in college, which is unheard of, that have all eclipsed the 1,000-yard receiving receiving yards mark in one season. It's rare in the NFL. It's rare in college. That's one thing. I think Chris Olave is, I think Chris Olave is going to play. I don't think he needs to play to raise or lower to raise his draft stock. I think he is the player that he is. Him playing, it's just go for it. You're with your boys. One last two raw. Go out with the bang. You're going out with the bang is simply, hey, hey, CJ Stroud. Let's knock this bad boy out within the first two series. Get me these yards. It could be over that 1,000-yard receiving mark. And let's go and have some fun and destroy these Utah Utes. This is a great way to go out with the bank. I can't think of a better player. A more, it's more, been more fun to watch over the past four years from start to finish than Chris Olave. Yes, Chase Young was fun. J.K. Dobbins was fun. Dwayne Haskins was fun. Justin Fields was fun, but to see the smile on Alave's face, to see the way that he entered the Ohio State University football program, to see how fans really jumped on board and fell in love with him and really enjoyed the growth and the progression from Chris Alave, to seeing people like Ross Jackson from Locked On Saints, who ends up being somebody who consistently says they want on the New Orleans Saints once he's eligible, excuse me, once he enters the NFL. I love what Alave brings to the table. I love what Alave does. And for Santa Claus, if we're thinking about Santa Claus bringing a gift to this year's offense, hey, Santa, don't forget Mr. Alave. He deserves this. He's worked hard for it. Kind of gift wrap it for him. Kind of let the defense sag off a little bit. I know that they, they may try to muddy up the coverage. Hey, have Alave dictate what they do, not them dictate what he does. Alave gets that in the first quarter, eclipsing the 1,000-yard receiving mark. The other one, it's on the receivers. And if Garrett Wilson does not play, remember, it's an if, not, it's not set in stone. But if Garrett Wilson does not play, there's another thing that I would love to see happen. Santa Claus is all about giving gifts and making people happy. Jackson Smith and Jigba. For as great of a year as he has had this year, he only has six receiving touchdowns. Alave has 13. Garrett Wilson has 12. Imagine the Ohio State offense. If they can have three receivers eclipse the 1,000-yard receiving mark, and if they can have three receivers eclipse the 10-touchdown mark in one season because the bowl stats – the Rose Bowl stats do go, and they are in a part of the final stats for the season. Imagine Alave gets his gift, gift wrap from him from Santa Claus. Jackson Smith and Jigba gets in on the action as well, and he gets a little something, a little gift from Santa Claus. Boom, boom. You can't go wrong when Santa Claus is just embracing and helping all the players in the passing game Get a little Christmas cheer on a New Year's Day, starting the new year with a bang. CJ Stroud, I do believe, is going to come out with a vengeance. I do believe that the way that the Heisman ceremony, well, the Heisman voting went, I personally think he's going to show up and show out in a way that we have not seen this year. And with him being so focused, with him being ready, for whatever happens that Utah throws at him. Santa's like, hey, this is perfect. I got a little gift for Olave before he goes into the NFL draft. I got a little gift for Jackson Smith and Jigba before he goes and begins his next season at Ohio State to go off next year just like he did this year. All behind C.J. Stroud and what he has done this year. Baby, this is fun. I love it. 
It's enjoyable. And let's go out with a bang alave. Santa's got a gift for you. Hey, and Jigba, you got to get into the party as well. He has a gift for you too. I could keep going with the offense, but we're going to stop right there when we come back. I got a gift from Santa Claus for the Ohio State defense as a unit and for the special teams unit as well. But first, check this out. Thank you you for tuning in to this fun Christmas Eve episode of Locked on Buckeyes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every single day. While you're out and about, hit that screenshot on your phone or screen grab on your phone. Go ahead, take a picture of your computer screen, take a picture of your dash on your car. When you're listening to Locked on Buckeyes, tweet at me, tweet that picture out at jsteven07, put it in your Instagram story at jsteven07 on the IG as well. I'll share it on my Instagram story. I'll retweet that thing. Let everyone know the place to be to enjoy some Buckeye talk five days a week. On the offense, we already hit Alave. We hit Smith and Jigba. A little added, little buzz there. Wasn't even planning on going down that route, but it's there when you look, but it's there when you look at the stat sheet because Santa wants to make a lot of people happy. But that was on the offense. I know I hit two on the offense. On defense, we're hitting 11-plus players. So you're saying, Jay, is Santa really in a really a big gift-giving mood right now? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. He surely is. And what does he want to give this defense? <laughs> a different level of physicality that we have not seen all season long. We have seen physicality from this Buckeye defense. We have also seen them play pretty soft at times. We have also seen them not read and react at times. We have also seen them not be able to shed blockers. We have also seen the linebackers get hit by the offensive lineman, get covered up, and, well, not be able to rub and rip and grab and pull and get away from the defender. We have not seen it. And if Santa Claus is a lot, the Santa that I was told about as a kid, I think he has something for the defense as well. Think about what we've heard about the Utah Utes football team. They're physical. They're just a physical bunch. We ain't really heard much about their offense, much about their defense. All I keep hearing is Utah is physical. Kyle Welling, Winningham, Winningham, there we go. He, he's been whipping up something in, in his lab and Utah going to their first Rose Bowl. They're going to be ready for the task. They're going to be ready to not get embarrassed. They're going to bring their physicality from Utah all the way to Pasadena. They're physical. That's all we've heard. What have you heard about the Ohio State defense? Not just offense, but defense. Man, they soft. <laughs> Man, this ain't the regular Ohio State team that I'm used to watching. Man, they are soft. And we have heard that S-O-F-T word all the time. Josh Gaddis mentioned it on uh, Michigan. Michigan coach mentioned it. Um, Still, Chambers did not shy away from real from the reality of the football team and how they and how they played against Michigan. They were S O F T, and Santa Claus saw that game just like I think 15.9 million people watched that game. Santa Claus was watching that game as well, and Santa Claus is like, "Look, we're not going from Columbus to Pasadena and get destroyed." No, 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 no. Ohio State has read. Santa Claus has has read. We're going to work at this thing together and make sure that when you go to SoCal, you are not getting embarrassed once again in back-to-back -back games. Santa does not want this to be a 10-3 and season or a season where Ohio State has back-to-back -back losses to finish the season. What can he help with this defense? A different level of physicality that they have not seen this year. Last but not least, Santa Claus is already here. He's not really, he's coming to town. When he comes to town, there's a man that has the initials E, E, a Mecca, Egbuka, a man that ended up getting hurt in a game at, towards the end of the season, did not, was not able to play return kicks. All of a sudden, we saw that Jillian Fleming was back there, and boy, I was holding my breath. Shades back to Jalen Marshall being back there and returning, and returning kicks. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Maybe not as bad as Jalen Marshall, but I mean, maybe a little worse than Jalen Marshall. I don't know. Um, that's a subjective thing there, but let me just tell you, 
I was a little nervous when I saw J- Julian Fleming back there returning kicks. He had Garrett Wilson healthy. He wasn't back there. He got Travion Henderson healthy. He wasn't back there. I thought we were supposed to put our best a- best athlete, best player back deep to return kicks if it's eligible for you. And if something is in your ski, a part of your team, if it's not, a lot of coaches will go ahead and do that because it used to be Deion Sanders was back there, best player on Florida State. Um, other schools out there had their best players back there returning kicks. Now, Ohio State does not have a Devin Hester where he's a return specialist. Yes, he does play a position, but he's a return specialist, and he's going to go into the Hall of Fame as a returner. Ohio State is not blessed in that way at that position. However, what Ohio State does is have a an elusive, a quick, a fast returner who is a true freshman, Emeka Egbuka, and Santa Claus has been watching. Been very, very careful with taking down his notes, dropping the glasses down to behind the nose. Some of you right there on the YouTube, you're like, Jay, what are you, Jay, are you really just going to do this? Oh, yeah, I got to play the character. And he's writing stuff. He's writing things down. And he's saying, Emeka, sir, I've seen you. You almost broke one a couple times. Didn't happen, no. We're going to start the new year not only off with a win, but we're also going to start the new year with you doing something that has not been done in a very long time. Take that bad boy to the house, get a house call tweet from Jay, and let's keep this thing rocking. Santa Claus has gifts. The Buckeyes love gifts. You love gifts. These are three or four things we will all enjoy, hopefully enjoy, on Chris on New excuse me New Year's Day Christmas is tomorrow on New Year's Day Alave over 1,000 receiving yards Jackson Smith and Jigba over 10 receiving touchdowns on the season a different level of physicality for the Ohio State defense and Emeka Egbuka take that bad boy to the house as always guys you can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07 I hope you enjoy your Christmas with your family, your friends, your relatives, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins that you haven't seen in a long time, or maybe you see them all the time. Have fun with them. You can follow me on Instagram at jsteven07. Send the emails to me at jstevens317 at gmail.com. This will be the final time we are together before Christmas. We'll be back Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week. Getting you ready for the granddaddy of them all. That is next week for now. This I am Jay Stevens. We are out here for Locked on Buckeyes. Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a fun time watching basketball, football, and enjoying some good food with your family and friends.